you, to you, Molly, for finding the time to talk to us about content strategy and health. Over to you. Yeah, I mean, I'll kick us off. I've got a couple of slides to, to introduce the topic, and then I'm looking forward to more of a discussion. Uh, I really enjoyed that um, in Florida with several of you, and um, the last time I was able to join, or the last couple of times I've been able to join these calls and hear from others. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Marley Mezabov. I'm the content design lead for product content at Verily, which is a health tech company. Um, before working at Verily, I was on the agency side. I worked with a number of different content management systems. I worked with content for all different types of health and finance organizations. So coming into Verily, which is uh, creating our own products and trying to bridge the clinical research world with healthcare in the United States and working with some of the resources of being an alphabet company, a sister company to Google, I have been learning so much about what it's like to be on the inside and also bringing a lot of that background of seeing the broader health tech industry. Uh, I've been there for three years now and I've been interested in this concept and verily I've been putting into practice, how does content strategy impact health? But for years before that, I've been talking about this and a concept that I, some of you may be familiar with, it's known as health literacy. So when John is asked if I would be interested in speaking about health literacy to this group, I said, of course. And can I get a, just a show of hands, has anybody heard that term health literacy before? A couple of people, yeah. Um, Broadly speaking, we're all familiar with the concept of literacy, right? The ability to read and write. A lot of times people will think of literacy as being uh, binary. You can or you cannot. Other times we talk about it as the grade level. Do you have, in the United States, we'll talk about it as like a fourth grade reading level or sixth grade reading level. Um, You'll see that for children's books to identify if someone should be able to understand the material. Health literacy is a little different. It's not quite the ability to read and write for health. It's actually, it's the degree to which individuals can not only read and understand health information, but find the information understand it, but also use the information. And it's also about finding and using health services, the things that inform our health-related decisions and the actions that we then take. I know that this is true in many countries that healthcare systems can be very complex. I do think in the US it's a little more complicated than many because we've introduced uh, many different private insurance companies. And so in order to get care, people first need to choose an insurance company that will cover their care. But that coverage is actually only giving you permission to see certain providers or go to certain hospitals. And so you need to understand a lot of that or else you're going to get astronomical bills. Something like 50% of bankruptcies come in some part from medical bills. A friend, giving a, a personal note, a friend um, had a, has his three-year-old daughter was in the back of his car. They had just come from the grocery store. He buckled her in, he got into his, he got into the driver's seat. He looks back and realizes she's shaking. He realizes very quickly she's having a seizure. This has never happened before. He immediately calls 911. They come, they send an ambulance. They pick them up, they bring them to the hospital. She's fine. Turns out some three-year-olds develop seizures briefly. Didn't know that. Um, horrifying, terrible moment. Happily, everybody gets to go home safely. Uh, a few weeks later, a bill comes in the mail. $800 for the ambulance ride. So he says, okay, well, I must've done something wrong. So he calls and he says, should I have been calling, like I called 911, I didn't call a specific ambulance. And they said, well, 
yeah, but that ambulance wasn't covered under your insurance. And he said, well, what ambulance services are covered under my insurance? And he said, well, this one is. And he said, okay, how would I have gotten that one? And they said, well, they don't operate in this area. This is incredibly common. So when we talk about health literacy, this is a concept that I started being popularized and really got this definition in 2010 under Barack Obama's presidency in the US. But the definition has been evolving over time. And now it's been crafted in such a way that it emphasizes people's ability to use the information rather than just understand it, because who cares if you can understand it if in that moment you can't use it. Focusing on the ability to make what they call well-informed decisions rather than appropriate ones. In other words, focusing on people having ownership of their health by being well-informed. This also incorporates a public health perspective. It understands that not everyone starts with the same level of access and acknowledging that organizations have a responsibility to address health literacy. And that's where it comes to all of us here. So broadly, we can think of health information as the skills, the information, and also the presence of mind in the moment to do everything from asking follow-up questions of your doctor to choosing a breakfast cereal that would keep you satiated until lunchtime, uh, picking up medication at the pharmacy and double checking that's the one that you ordered, deciding if you wanna go for a run, even when that weird hamstring cramp is happening, or choosing whether you want that extra glass of wine at dinner, and weighing the pros and cons of the surgery options that your doctor offers. All of these things, not just sitting in a doctor's office, but really all of these day-to-day -day life things, all of this requires our health literacy. And it turns out it is uncommon. 88% of US adults have substandard rates of health literacy. Critical health literacy is necessary for recognizing the symptoms of a chronic condition. Um, de in turn, that decreases emergency hospitalizations and allows people to navigate the health system. But only 12% of people have that. 88% is a significant number of people. So where does content strategy fit in? You would, right, because I think I tend to hear that and my initial thought is, well, that's a very broken system. Sounds like we should all become lobbyists or go work for companies that can recreate health systems, right? But actually, content strategy is what enables health literacy. Even for those of you who are living in countries that don't have to deal with the private health insurance and don't deal with the huge rates of, uh, of medical debt, there are issues like, how do you decide if you want to get on that wait list for that surgery, or even if you should take that surgery? Everything I mentioned of choosing the foods in the grocery store, understanding what caffeine and alcohol and other choices that are not totally black and white of good or bad, but have varying degrees and affect you personally, all of those things and noticing how your body is acting differently than it was yesterday and whether or not that's worth a question to a provider or whether it's something you take care of on your own. All of those pieces are our health and require health literacy. So content strategy, the way that we plan for our content to be consumed, the way we format it, the cadence and the channels through which we deliver it, all of that impacts somebody's ability to find, understand, and use information. For example, I mentioned that we wanna take a public health perspective. It's really key that we not blame individuals for not understanding information that we haven't made clear. This is an example of a pretty well-written article written at a low grade level, explaining whether someone should go to the ER versus urgent care. Again, in the US, these are dramatically different places. They have different levels of expertise and they cost different things. Can you imagine you've just fallen, you've twisted your ankle, you're trying to decide if you should go, like where you pull up your phone, you Google, where's the closest place to me? And a couple that say urgent care and a couple that say ER come up and you're like, uh, so you Google urgent care or ER and this article comes up. Can you imagine trying to skim this for an answer when you're you're in pain, you're, or maybe it's your friend who fell or a loved one. And so you're trying to keep things together. You're worried about them. Formatting this appropriately and pulling out the relevant information all of that falls in the realm of content strategy. This one, <laughs> this is an actual email, a doctor's note that my sister received. 
She is college educated. She's very athletic. She's pretty familiar with how her body feels. She was having a lot of pain um, in her shin. And so she's been seeing the same doctor for years. She went, she said, I'm not sure what's going wrong. I run every day. She's on a, what's called a run streak of coming on five years. I don't want to have to stop. And they said, okay, let's do an MRI. This is what was emailed to her. Narrative, XR tibia fibula two views left. Indication, 27 years old female presents with lower leg pain medially. Note, there is subtle cortical thickening and periosteal new bone formation noted along proximal tibial metaphysics posteriorly and medially. This appearance is consistent with mild stress-related changes. There's no discrete fracture line. There's no dislocation. The visualized soft tissues are remarkable. Impression, subtle stress-related injury of the tibia, no discrete fracture. So I get a phone call saying, what is wrong with me? Now, luckily for her, not only am I working in this field in content, my brother's an ER nurse. So she gets the two of us on the phone and she's like, something's really, really wrong. They can't even explain it. I don't know what to do. How, do I have to give up running? Nope, you have a mild stress fracture. Call your physical therapist. A lot of people wouldn't have had anyone to ask. How would they have gotten that information? Or they would have been able to, they wouldn't, you know, my sister already has a physical therapist she could call. What do you do when you don't have those pieces in place? I, I'll do like three more examples and then I wanna stop because I do want a lot of time for us to, to chat about other experiences that other people have had with this or how you see uh, both content strategy and the ways that the tools that we have to put it in place helping. But I think it's really key that there have been some uh, grants provided, uh, some different groups that have focused on how do we improve health literacy for all. One thing that I really love, one of the first health literacy programs I learned about was entirely focused on training the nursing staff to stop asking, do you have any questions after giving information? Instead, they were told to prompt, tell me what you're planning to do now. Or can explain to me back what I just told you. Because it turns out that training people that just ask that question instead of putting the onus on the individual to figure out, do I understand this? It helps process a lot more and it helps the nursing staff to be in charge of hearing, do they actually understand it? And another success story, uh, maybe 10 years ago, there was a study in Chicago that showed that when people were asked to take two tablets twice a day, 66% of people mistook the medication. What is two tablets twice a day? Is that one morning, one evening? Or is that two morning, two evening? Is that 12 hours apart? Or could it be like when I wake up and lunchtime? Is it breakfast and dinner? So I wanna compare that to some of the things that have come out more recently. And I love this because even though it's a little more verbose, they're a little bit longer, they're so much clearer. So now we end up with medications that have images that say how to take two tablets twice a day. 60 coated tablets is a 15 day supply. All right, that requires you to do a little bit of math. All right, 15 goes into 60. So over 15 days I'm taking, that's four a day. Okay. so two in the morning, two in the end. It's not my favorite, but the information is at least there. Uh, on the lower right, we have one tablet twice daily, one tablet in the morning, one tablet at night. I love that one. And then over on the left side, a little more complicated, but we have the 300 milligrams, two tablets, twice on day one with a nice image to help that be a little clearer, and then once daily maintenance dose. So a lot of different ways people are experimenting with getting this information across. And our health insurance companies that are highly motivated to get people to sign up with them are taking a stab at this as well. One guideline of health literacy is to keep the actual reading level between fourth and sixth grade. Now it's easy to hear that a lot of people come to me and say, well, yeah, but that's dumbed down, right? I mean, my audience is smarter than that. I mean, most people who work for this company have at least a high school, if not a college degree. Doesn't matter. In the moment when something bad happens, your heart rate spike, your heart rate spikes, 
your brain goes fuzzy. I try to imagine that somebody is reading anything I write while at the grocery store with a child pulling on one arm, screaming at them, another child trying to grab things from the you know, candy bars right there, the person, the register person saying, what do you want, uh, cash or credit? How are you paying for this? And they've just gotten the alert on their phone that says that they have a cancer diagnosis. If I write that cancer diagnosis, assuming, yeah, but the company they work for that I'm providing insurance for, they have college degrees. This woman or this man, this person is going to have no idea what I'm saying to them. They're certainly not going to process it and be able to take action on it. So I really appreciate that Aetna, one of the insurance companies in the U.S., has started taking a stab at defining some of the terminology that comes up frequently, even before, this is for prospects. This isn't for people who have already signed up for them. And they also make the rest of the language particularly clear and easy to parse. So it's not that if you take the word coinsurance, for example, out, that everything else is a fourth grade reading level. It's that even with that word in there, they write everything else so simply that altogether it can be at that reading level. In short, better health is completely reliant on communication. So how does content strategy impact health? Lower readability levels are easier to scan when you're stressed. Reputable information prepares people for better communication with their providers. And better health apps and websites make it easier to get answers, which leads to getting the right preparation, whether that's insurance or other pieces of the puzzle that you need to put together, finding the right care, knowing what questions to ask. That's where I'm coming from. And I do want to open it up to the group now. How has this aligned with uh, with all of with your experiences? Oh, and thank you, Mark. Uh, yeah, I, that seems I, to run I, in the family. <laughs> I know. Well, my sister had a, a, a stress fracture a few years ago, and I still love using that example because going in, and I will say, I should start using, this as my example. Last year I tore my ACL and the first thing I did, yeah, I was, I was skiing and I'm a competitive runner and it was, it was pretty horrific for me. And the first thing I did was figure out who can come with me to every single appointment mm. because I need somebody there to write down everything the doctor says so that I can look back over it later. So before I go into every appointment, I make a list of my questions. We go through them. I make what notes I'm thinking to make. I've got somebody else who can listen for what I can't hear in that moment because sometimes the provider answers my first question and that's a gut punch, right? And now, even though I've got the second question written down there, I'm not asking it right or I don't think of what follow-up I should be asking to that, that's actually going back to those levels of health literacy um that second level intermediate is often called interactive and that's really so sorry i'll go through these really quickly the first level is considered the ability to uh literally read something and understand what it says the second level is almost a confidence piece it's the ability to hear something and think of how to respond back get your second get think about getting a second opinion a lot of that's based on experience um, but it's also, right, you have to parse the information and still have the presence of mind to go farther. So step one would be these carrots say uh, no added sugar. Step two is thinking, wait a second, why do carrots have added sugar? I, that's not my concern. I need to make sure I'm getting some protein in this meal as well. And then step three is sort of bringing the math into it, thinking through, well, I had the protein this morning. I can weigh this out and I'm not actually deficient in protein lately, even though I did see that documentary that was saying everybody needs more protein. I've been feeling fine. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Or I should really ask my doctor about that. Let me prioritize that above whatever I was going to talk to them about at my next appointment. So sorry, bit of a bit of a digression there, but I think it's you're 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 story is pretty apt like my i'm dealing with my mother in and out of kind of uh er to the step down which is a new thing for me um 
And it's interesting, they give you discharge papers. And the huge disconnect is you may get there, you know, and you may understand why you're there and you may understand what you're doing while you're there because there's lots of people around. But when people put information on papers that they leave, you leave with, oh, my God, they're written in like you need a, you know, a uh, PhD to even read them. So it, there's an interesting like, you know, your your sites and your digital platforms can reinforce this, I don't know, dumbed down um, communication, but it fails uh, like three other places along the patient interaction. Um, so it's interesting. This is super helpful. So one one link I just shared, Marley, uh, kind of reminded me more from a design perspective uh, from two years ago when we had a book club meeting on life and death design. And she said some of the same examples that that you shared, you know, regardless of level of education. But if you just had an emergency or some less good news, mm -hmm. fourth to sixth grade reading level is probably the best you'll do. And you don't want, you know, you want a stop button that just says stop. You know, you don't want a big dashboard that you need to navigate first. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Sarah Walker Betcher talks about instead of thinking about edge cases, we should call them stress cases mm -hmm. because often those we, you know, we design for the happy path and yeah. we forget that even if they don't happen as often, those are the situations, those unhappy paths are the situations where people need us the most. Yep, very and good. That's uh, not other... even, she's not even speaking specifically for healthcare. She's talking about for everything that we're doing, right? The moment that your computer is crashing and you're trying to get this thing uploaded because you just found out that you know the site has to change by tomorrow or else, <laughs> but yes. you've got dinner plans and have to get out of the office, and that's when everything needs to go smoothly. Yes. Any other questions, uh, comments? Mark and I took it away here uh, in the first part of the Q&A. Um, happy to hear from anybody else. Uh, questions, reflections, uh, things that made you uh, think. Um, perhaps Jonathan, do you want to jump in with this fancy background that you have there in the office? Uh, yeah, coming to you live from Manchester today. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, things are slightly different from a healthcare system in the UK to what they are in the US. But, you know, the, the observation about sort of complexity of content and things like that really strikes me. Uh, I think um, so many of our, our sort of clients and institutions spend so long thinking about the, the sort of features and functionality level of doing things when actually investing more budget and more emphasis in having high quality content might serve the needs of users much better would be my kind of observation and takeaway um and you know i've worked with some organizations in the healthcare sector who who do seem to put a lot of emphasis and thinking into the content that they produce mm -hmm. but i'd agree with you that you know i read a lot of a lot of stuff and i just find it thoroughly confusing um and it, you know I'd like to think I'm in the 12%, but I'm probably not, if I'm honest with myself. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, we all jump between these. Yes. So today, I'm in the 12%. I got a good night's sleep. I <laughs> got my time at the gym this morning. I'm talking with you lovely people. I'm relaxed. If a bill comes today, I can go through it. I can figure that out. Um, yesterday when I got home after a very full day and was running around like a crazy person, I would be lucky if I was in intermediate. And the day that I tore my ACL, I was below basic. I could not read something and process it. So we all, we all jump between. That's the other thing that I, I like to keep in mind here. So whereas right. literacy tends to be a, well, you, you know, you know how to read. That doesn't really go away. How literacy <laughs> Yeah. Very good. So yeah. jumping from uh, not only levels here, but also from Manchester to Toronto, Katharina. I'm, thank you. I'm curious if does this writing ever does this communication ever go through user testing before it's published? 
and it still passes and meets whatever criteria uh, to go into production. This is one of my pet peeves that I have yet to figure out a good way to do this because here's the problem. How do you test for stressful situations? Like if I guarantee you that uh, this was tested, I guarantee you it passed those tests. It's like I said, it's well-written. It's, if you look at it, it's short sentences. It's uh, easy information. It's like, it's, it's short paragraphs. The whole article isn't even that long, but it sort of assumes if you read this and then I asked you some questions about it, you would probably retain it. Mm -hmm. But that's not how a lot of situations, and again, it's not just healthcare, right? How many situations we need the information not at the exact moment that we read it. I think uh, they almost need to set up the user testing. You're walking outside in the cold without a jacket and balls are being thrown at you. And, and then you're reading it and seeing what you can retain. <laughs> that would be perfect. Yeah, we'll, we'll start our own agency. We'll do uh, stress <laughs> testing. That'll be the... We'll be millionaires be in no time. <laughs> yeah, I, we desperately need that. All right, and then uh, there's a question from Katrina. Um, how does content strategy need to change to be able to meet people where they're at? Uh, anything beyond testing? Yeah, two things. Uh, first of all, consider your use case. Um, if you're writing about the emergency room, you have to assume that whoever you're writing for is barely at basic. If you're writing about selecting uh, a provider, you can assume that somebody is not selecting a provider for their annual checkup at a time when they're in an emergency. So you can hope that they're at least at basic and maybe intermediate. There's also guidance that you can do. For example, I mentioned like I, I make a point of writing down my questions before going to a provider. More and more apps that I've, at least the ones that I've worked on, we, we set aside a space that will say, what questions do you wanna make sure to ask? Or we'll even have some sample questions to help you think about. So there are things that there are prompts that we can do, pieces like that. Um, basically think about stressful situations as areas where you're working with someone who is spinning around in a room and saying, just show me where to go. So mm -hmm. get as personalized as you can, write out your use cases, figure out your persona, and then help them pause, help them take a deep breath and point them in the direction they need to go. Or even say, here's an example, here are some things, do these apply to you? That's great. Thank you very much, Molly. Really appreciate it. We made it right on time. A pleasure having you with us. Good to hear that Thanks you're doing much. better. Your sister too, and yeah. thanks for taking us through yeah. uh, health literacy and introducing this concept to us and your current work. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. As I mentioned, this is like near and dear to my heart. It's like my favorite topic. Please find me on LinkedIn. I'm the only Marley Mezabov out there. I'm on, uh, yeah, I guess not Twitter anymore. Um, but yeah, find me online or I'm uh, Marley M at Gmail. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.